Hey, hey everybody, Jay here. I'm back with another quick video for you guys today. Today, let's talk quickly about end millware and when you should replace them. Let's get going. There's a tremendous amount of CNC content here on YouTube. I've benefited so much I can't even begin to tell you guys, but there are still gaps, there are still holes out there, and there isn't a lot of really, really good information. If you're one of the guys that's cutting a lot of aluminum on your CNC mill, then you probably don't go through tools that much unless you're in a really high production environment. But if you're cutting steel, and more specifically, anything that's closer to tool steel or any of these like super alloys like Inconel, you're probably going through tools a lot more quickly than anybody that's cutting any sort of aluminum. And it's really kind of tricky to know when to change the tools. If you're in a super high production environment and the job's been quoted correctly, then you just, you probably have some type of a schedule where you just change them out as you go. But if you're like me and you do some production and some specialty jobs, it's nice to be able to extend the life of the tool as much as you can. And since I haven't found too much information online, I've kind of developed my own, I guess my own internal strategy. And I would say that it's the, the three S's, right? It's the sound, the surface finish, and the sizing. And those are exactly what they sound like. The sizing just means that as this tool wears, we use cutter compensation to bring it into tolerance. We can either use G41 or G42, and we can use the tool length wear offset in the tool table on your CNC machine to make sure that your parts are coming out accurately. Of course, at some point you begin to have a degraded surface finish, and this is the second S. I've got three pictures right here, and you can see that this is the flat top of a surface of a part, and this is just taken off like five or seven thousand. I can't remember, but it's one or the other. And you can see that in this very first picture, the tool path is absolutely beautiful. And then in the next picture, several parts later, it's beginning to wear. And then in this very last picture, you can see that this end mill is just creating a surface finish that just, it just really isn't pleasing to the eye anymore. It doesn't really feel rough to the touch, but this end mill is clearly coming to the end of its life. And last but not least, there's the last S is sound. And this one is far more subjective if you ask me. When you have a really nice recipe, when you've got a dialed formula for your speeds and feeds, for the end mill you've selected, for the tool path and the material or whatever, more often than not, you have a clean, crisp, solid hum. The machine's not doing any shuddering or shaking. It's just a clean, smooth tool path. But over time, you may find that the same exact tool in the same toolpath begins to chatter or act stupid. It may start to leave a deteriorated surface finish, why the sound starts to alter. You'll just tell that you have to start tweaking the feeds and speeds, and that's because your tool is just not sharp anymore. This is kind of a double-edged sword. If you're roughing, does it really matter? You know, it, it, it's not super critical. But if you're obviously trying to finish something, then it is super critical, and the end mill is going to have to be replaced at some point. Finishing up, I want to bring up one more point about sound. I use these pretty expensive two inch length of cut, half inch four fluid end mills, they're about 75 bucks. I have found that when the traditionally programmed tool path for my part begins to squeal or chatter a little bit and the surface finish begins to degrade, sometimes I can get a little bit more life out of that tool by backing the surface footage down and increasing the step over with the same depth of cut. This isn't ideal, and you don't want to be doing this in a high production environment where you're tweaking and altering your programs. But when you have these $75 a piece end mills and you're trying to get the very most life out of them, this is one little option that I have found works for me. I don't know if this is a good practice because I'm not a traditional machinist, as you guys probably already know. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have questions or comments or you're an experienced machinist and you have good answers, Tell us down in the comments and I'll pin the very best comments. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.